Hey guys, so I wanted to quickly add this in. Um, the video will start in just a second, or the main part will start in just a second. But um, I wanted to come up here and film this really quickly. I had settled in to start editing. I think you guys either know me at this point or you don't. And I admit, like, I don't put a lot of personal information. A lot of these, these are very frivolous, fun videos. You know, I don't talk about a ton of personal things. Or, you know, maybe you've gotten to know me over the years and you guys know that, you know, I'm a very heartfelt person. I'm a very old school person. I don't really rely on social media to express my feelings. I think a lot of you and, you know, family of my, anybody watching that, that knows me knows I'm a very kind of inward, heartfelt person. And I really get upset about, um, like, and I really worry and I really think about, like, world events. And, they, you know, I sometimes get nervous about this type of world that my child will have to live in. You know, I'm a realist. I realize that horrible things happen, but I'm also a positive person in that, you know, you've got to be an adult. You've got to know that there are things in the world that are evil. You can't turn your back on that and pretend like it's not happening. You have to allow yourself to be affected by those things, to be human, but you also have to look at all of the good in the world so that you can be, you know, you have to, you have to keep you know, so that you can not just curl up in a ball and never see the sunlight, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, when I heard of all of the Paris attacks and everything, it was really heartbreaking, obviously. I think that goes without saying. And right now, honestly, I feel weird even talking about it. I feel like that it's such a deep thing. It's such a serious thing. That's why I'm, when, you know, nobody, I, I didn't post anything on Instagram. I didn't think to. My first instinct is not you know, when I heard about that, even days after, I did not think, let me run to social media and express how I feel because I didn't feel like I owed that to anybody, but I do know that deep in my heart, this is a way for me to reach people that may have been affected or my French subscribers or people that are from any country that were affected. I think we all were affected by it. And um, even filming this right now, I have all, I have <laughs> like half of the things on my board are stubs from when I went to Paris or photos that I took and it's just a, something that I that I love when I look at it I feel good and so it broke my heart not because it was Paris not because but because it was humanity it was people that were being affected and I can't imagine it I just can't so I didn't think that I owed it to anyone to explain why I haven't mentioned I didn't think that and no one said anything about it I just started thinking I would like to explain it because I thought about doing it before and then when it I just didn't. I I don't know. It's one of those things like when, if someone's mother dies, do you go to social media to tell them, I'm sorry. I, that's how I feel and it's hard to explain it. Like I can't, it feels not dirty, but it just, it feels wrong for me or frivolous, I guess, I, for me to even say, to address it and then let's go into talking about lipstick. You know, it's, but there are things that you have to realize in life just because someone talks about fun things, it doesn't mean that they're not concerned with something else. So I guess I just really wanted to come on here and think, you know, because when I was, I was I'm probably not making any sense, but I was thinking right before I edited, I was like, you know, if, if I even have one subscriber that like, I was thinking, I hate that I didn't mention that at the beginning. I hate that I thought not to do that. But my first instinct when something like that happens is to pray. And, and maybe that's why I don't talk about a lot of heavy subjects on social media or I don't feel the need to always do that because I feel connected in other ways. Um, not the people that do aren't, but I guess that's just what I'm saying. Like, I feel like I'm still so, like my heart is breaking for all of those people and my heart breaks like every day thinking about so much horrible things in the world. But like I said, you have to continue, you can't let that affect your life, you know, you can't let that control your life, you know, you can't let that horribleness control your life. But I'm the type of person that I feel icky if, like, close family contacts me on Facebook or if my husband and I talk to each other. I just, I'm like, pick up the phone, like, if you have something to tell me, like, let's talk, you know what I mean? I'm just that type of person, so... When, if, if I don't say anything on social media about something, it's not because I don't care, it's just because it's social media. And to me, it's just, social media to me is not the biggest thing. It doesn't dictate how I feel, but I know sometimes it is helpful to dictate how I feel to reach the audience through social media. So I get that. 
I just, you know, my heart is breaking for you and with you and I can't wait to come back to Paris one day and that's all I'm gonna say, I, I love it so much. I just feel sometimes like I'm not ready to talk about things or, and sometimes I just feel like, you know, I don't know if I can say the right things or I guess that's what it is. I don't know, I just, I felt like, I don't know, I just decided to go ahead and start filming today. I guess, you know, sometimes you think things go without saying, I guess that's what I'm trying to say, but sometimes it is nice to say it even if you don't say it just right. So I think it's just such a heavy subject. It's, I, I could not just come on and say, I'm praying for Paris, you know, I'm thinking about it and then just moving on. I don't know. And maybe that's what this is gonna seem. I just, I don't know. I, I feel like, I don't, it's just such a big deal. And I just want you guys to know what a big deal it is to me. And obviously it's a big deal to everybody, but look at all the beautiful things in life. Pray hard, hug your family extra tight. And, um, and yeah, my heart does continue to break for that whole whole situation to even call it. it's just so much bigger that I can even than I can even put into words so so yeah I just wanted to tell you guys that and um, here is the video I have fallen in love with these new liquid lipsticks especially by Kat Von D I kind of went on a little kick and purchased quite a few of them I'm filming this intro at the end of the video after I've already like tried them all. So before filming this, I had yet to try these except for one. And um, the red one's what made me really fall in love with it. I, you know, have never really been super into dark lips or like red lips or anything, but this formula really makes it easy. It kind of really sets and that's kind of the beauty of liquid lipstick. And I can see why this is such a trend or why it's such a buzzed about item right now, pretty much every company, most every company is coming out with something like this. So the Kat Von D, I really like the formula. I also have the NYX Liquid Suede. And I'm gonna show you the favorite color that I have in that. I have a bunch of other ones and I've swatched all of those. I really, really love that formula as well and I think that they've got some amazing colors. I will link to a video below that I filmed months back where I swatched all of them and I'll try to actually link to the part of the video where I was swatching them. Um, because I don't want to be repetitive and this video is kind of just like a let's play with these let's talk about it and I want to give you some good tips on how to make them wearable I have one color by dose of colors that my friend sent me that I'm gonna try out with you guys that I really like I've worn it once and um, I figured I would share it too and then also the Too Faced Melted I don't think that they're very similar to those and that they're they don't have that like set lasting power but these are good too especially this color and I have some tips on using that one as well so I'm gonna show you kind of my go-to look with this I'll try out all the Kat Von D I'll kind of try out the dose of colors we're just gonna kind of go with it and have fun and I'm gonna give you some tips I feel like you know for for years I just wasn't into lip liner I wasn't into like dark lip color actually in the 90s and like early 2000s I really loved brown lipstick and so um, I did, you know, it, it always made my lips look, like, not look bigger, it just made them look like what they are because my lips are very pale. You can't see my lip line, um, you'll see in a minute when I have nothing on that, like, they're exactly like they've always been. Some people, the other day when they saw that, this combo that I was wearing, they were like, did you get lip injections? And I'm like, no, you can just actually see my lip line, you know? I think for me, it's not necessarily lip size, it's the shape of your lips and like really emphasizing that. I really like my lip shape. I don't overline my lips. For me, that looks super, super obvious. And you know, like I said, I'm not trying to make my lips look bigger, but it's just nice to have them look more pronounced and you can actually see what they are. But then again, I love to just wear nothing sometimes and just do like nude because I just really don't care because I really like that too. But it's just funny how these colors really, really do make such an impact. And what's cool about these is that when you use the darker colors, you don't need lip liner. Uh, some of the colors I did use lip liner for, like I went back and kind of did that as we were trying them because I, I felt like it needed one. Um, but we're just going to kind of go with it. And also I'm going to kind of show you that to make them wearable, sometimes you need to mix different ones. Like quickly, I'm wearing this top by Free People. I don't know if you guys remember that video uh, when I was with my sister and we went to Free People and got some things and I picked this up. It's just a very boxy sweater. Really pretty and I'm just wearing it with some black leggings and 
Um, perfect time of year to wear this because it's not like a full sleeve sweater, but it's still really cozy. I've got this new gorgeous date cuff by L&M, which is like breathtaking. It's Olivia's uh, birthday, so that was so incredibly sweet. I just love those. And then my birthstone, Olivia's birthstone, uh, my Hermes wrap bracelet, and then this is by L&M also. I've had it for a very long time. Um, it's just a really pretty heart link choker and I have it kind of on the loosest one but you can make it a little tighter but it's just really pretty and then this I thought you'd be able to see maybe not uh, but it's by Bobble Bar and it's so so pretty it's like this really cool very modern looking it's one piece but then it also has like a Y necklace that hangs off of it like a very long one so really cool so that's what I'm wearing today and yeah let's go ahead and get started I don't know how this is gonna piece together, but we'll go ahead and start with my liquid suede combo that I really like, favorite little products. But first, the three, actually I have four different brands of ones that I have. I recently, my friend just sent me one that's really good. But the NYX Liquid Suede is another brand. This one is so good, and I'm gonna do that right now because this is kind of driving me nuts and I have anything on my lips, but um, yeah. So this tea and cookies is really awesome, and um, that's what I'll do now. The cool thing about these is that you do not need any lip liner. That's what's so fun. You can certainly wear it, but I find that when I do it, it's just a waste. Um, so I'm gonna like, my lips were kinda really glossy from that. I put on the Duo Lip Maximizer, and that's another little trick of mine, is um, it's this. it has a very light, I wouldn't even say tingling, I mean plumping, like it's not, it just, if you have lines in your lips, it kinda just, fills them and it's not irritating. If I ever use like anything that says plumping, I get uh, like blood vessels, you know what I mean? Like little red dots and that's not good. So this is nice, so I'll put that on like while I'm getting ready or sometimes I'll just put lipstick right over it, but sometimes I'll blot it off, especially if I'm gonna use a product like this. So I just wanted to show you this first and we'll kind of take off the different combos and do some different things, but I really wanted to show you this because this is my favorite. Um, so it's a really pretty like rosy color. Mavi Rose. My mirror looks really dirty. Um, so I just kind of, I start in the middle of the bottom and, oh gosh, I'm going to want to talk while I do this. A trick with these is not to pile it up. Don't goop it on because they're not lip glosses. You want to keep it as thin as possible. And then I kind of um, get the lip line smooth. And 110% my biggest tip is don't over draw your, I mean, you can do that, but it really does look obvious. Like in, in person, it's just not good. So I keep it right at the lip line and then I kind of go like that so that sometimes you see pictures of people where you can see the line like in here, that's attractive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where you see like exactly, so just kind of go like that so that you blend it before it sets. Okay, I have, that's one thing. I have a very pale lip line. That's what's so funny. Like, um, I feel like my, my lips aren't super tiny. And everybody's like, where are your lips? And I'm like, okay, I have really pale lips and they're there. Uh, but, so then, yeah, do the same thing on the top. Can you see? Yes. Sometimes the mirror is like out in front. So don't go to the lip line yet. This is what I find is best. Get the color on first. And then take it to your lip line. Pretty, huh? So, yeah, that's what that looks like. Really pretty. I'd say get a color that is very wearable, like this. And um, this is probably the best one that I found. I have not tried on my Kat Von D colors yet, so, except for the reds. So I hope I can find one similar in that range, but I love this because it's not too pink, it's not just, it's not intense. You know, and enhancing your lip shape really does make a difference if you've got lips that are on the smaller side. I just mentioned that because in my last video everybody's like, you got lip injections, blah, blah, and it's like, obviously, no, I did not. So another huge tip with these is use, I hate to say two different colors because you may not want to buy, this is fine on its own, but making them look more dimensional is what it's all about. 
So this is, I'm not a fan of the Too Faced melted lipsticks. I'm not, I, I think that they're a little oily. They're not quite the same. You really have to use a thin layer. I see people gooping them up like lip gloss and, or, and that's just not. They're, you just have to be careful with them. There are a couple colors I like. I really like the Melted Peony. This is the one that came in the kit, but I also have a full-sized one. Um, this one's, you have to be careful because like I said, they can get kind of oily, so you have to kind of go like that before you use them. The Melted Sugar is my favorite, and then the Melted Nude. And I like the Melted Fig, and I have the Melted Chihuahua. I've had every single shade in this range, and I think it's best for people, the, the range is tricky in itself because the colors are so just very, not super wearable. Like. Even the ones that are a little more mauve are very purpley or might be a little too cool. I don't know. I think it's fine. I think you can wear them and it's everybody's different. I'm just speaking for myself. When you're doing something like this, you can take this, which is the malted sugar, which I would really recommend. I think if you're going to get one of these, this is what I would get. And then get just a little bit and dab it right in the center. And it gives you that dimension. And that is what I was doing in my last video except I didn't do it with this, I did it with a gloss. This would probably stay on a little longer, but you have to be really careful if you're gonna do it with a gloss. I haven't found many glosses that are like this. This is the Jane Iredell Soft Peach. It is very thick. Any kind of gloss um, that you use is probably, I can't say any gloss is gonna work because some of them, if they're a little too thin, they may make the whole look a little runny. You can leave it like this, but I'm just saying alternatively, you can take a really frosted lighter gloss. This is the Soft Peach dab it right in the middle, and then you get some iridescence. It's really pretty, that's what I did in that other video. So, that I think is a really good tip, using the different colors, and like in this liquid suede, this is such a weird example, but like, okay, these two purple colors, using those together would be cool if you're into that. And again, I'll link to that um, post below. Uh, okay, so let's try on some different things. Mm. Before I do the Kat Von D, like I said, this is just going to be kind of all over the place and just chit-chatty. I'm going to have to take off, I don't want to kill my lips, so I'm going to try to do this as little as possible. Because I want to try on every single individual Kat Von D shade, because that's what this is really all about. But I do want to share this. My friend Jen, um, L&M, and her uh, YouTube is, uh, I'll link to her below. Anyways, she sent me this. We send little stuff back and forth to each other. She kept telling me about these and sent me one, and it's the uh, Dose of Colors in Stone. And I would say it's very, it's one of those wearable colors, but it's a little cooler and has a hint, it's more mauve -y. So like, whereas the Tea and Cookies is a little more pinky, like a little more of a, almost like a neutrally warm pink. It's not super warm and it's not super cool. I'd say this is just a good wearable one. This one is a touch on the cool side, but I really, really like it. I wore it the other day and it made my lips look freaking huge which is funny. I'm gonna layer it over this. I think it'll be fine. I think you'll be able to tell. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. So, you'll see this one is pretty uh, compared. You see it's that kind of stony, like cool mauve. I put it in the middle of my lips and then I go around the lip line. It's really, really pretty. I wore it the other day and Brad even said he liked it. This color is so friggin' pretty. Um, mm hmm So, thank you again, Jen. That one also sets up very similar to the Kat Von D and to the, uh, the NYX uh, Liquid Suede. Those kind of really all set up, whereas the melted ones, are gonna be more likely you'll be able to smear them if you really tried. First, this shade called Noble. I have the Noble lipstick in the Studded Kiss, and it is very nude, and I feel like this one's gonna be very nude too. Also, we'll see how wearable it is on its own, but I think this is gonna be kind of the equivalent of this Melted Sugar. I think that pairing it on top of other things is going to be beautiful. So, okay. So like I said, start very thin and spread it all over the large part of your lips, like in the center, and then go back. So, okay, this one is just like very nude. It's not gonna really, 
Emphasize your lip line. I think for this one, you would probably need a lip liner. Use this. This is Primrose, and it might be a bit dark for this, but it's okay. It made it a little better. Um, okay, so this is a very nude shade. I'm not sure, like, how nude wearable it would be day to day. I don't think it's that bad, honestly. It's pretty though, and I would wear it, but it is, it's just a nude look. Um, a lot of times when you have a really nude look, it's pretty to add a bit of like a, you know, again, that, that soft peach, that's really pretty. So doing something like that, I think kind of makes it a lot better <laughs> if you're just gonna be wearing it on its own. And if the lip gloss is like, it's too glo goopy, cause you don't want to smear it all over, I just did it in the middle. Um, you can blot it off a little. But I think the Melancholia might be pretty, like I said, the, this pink color might be pretty paired with it. So again, like I don't have any lip liner. I try to take off as much as I could. This one's really bright. Go like that so you don't have like that pink stripe, you know, on the inside. And just do the middles. And then go back around and get the lip line. These are a little sheer. It's just a really fun, like, girly pink, but it's not super, like, it's not gonna really define your lips. So again, using a lip liner might be prettier to use with those two lighter ones. This Marc Jacobs one is just, like, universal. It kinda works well to do it after can really like wipe off the wand and kind of go over that. And then if you put Noble over it. That's perfect. Okay, I really like that because it takes down the pink a little. It makes it sort of like dimensional. Really, really pretty. So again, that's just an example. And when you do that, don't try to blend it with the wand because you might end up like gooping it up. Just kind of, you know. Okay, so this color, I really don't think we're gonna need uh, like a lip liner for anything. It's a little darker. It's the Love Sick. And this one I think might be pretty with the Melancholia over it. We will see. Okay. This, I think, might be my favorite yet. Mm-hmm, oh yeah, oh yeah. This one is by far the favorite one out of any of them, out of the tea and cookies or anything, because I do like this formula better. This one is similar to the stone, but it's not quite as cool. It doesn't have as much of a gray in it, which I like for some, like, sometimes. But this one, I think, is it just, slightly more wearable and you can put let's see what this looks like with this is the melancholia that's more pink that's pretty too but I don't really even think I needed that so let's compare these two this is the Santa Singri Sunger and the Outlaw and the Outlaw is the color that I bought first the Santa Singer looks a little brighter? I don't know. I may have to return one of these because I don't even think that they're that big of a difference, but we'll try them out. I don't know. Okay, so let me try on the Outlaw. Or the, what the hell? The, so confusing. Okay, so this is the Santa Sanger one. This is the new one. This one I think is more, whoa, hello. This one's more like a true red, I think. The red is what made me fall in love with it. Honestly, hmm. Which one do I like better? I don't know. I, I think, because I've worn this one before, the Outlaw. I honestly think I like the Santa Singer better. This They say this one's like a poison apple red. I would say this one is a little more of a true red, whereas this one might be just a touch cool. Um, I'll put it over it and you can see. But see, when I wore this one, I thought, 
like I can't even tell that I'm doing anything like maybe just a hair darker but I know when I wore this one the outlaw I thought it's such a true red I don't know I kind of want to keep both of them but I don't think I need both of them honestly though I think that they're both very comparable let me swatch them so we can see when I wore the outlaw I wore it to eat Mexican food and it was still on when I left okay so this is Outlaw, this is Santa Singer, and I believe that Outlaw is just a touch more, like, darker red. And the Santa Singer, while it's like, while it's a really true red, has a touch more orange to it maybe, but um, really pretty. They are very, very similar. I'm surprised that they have two such similar colors, but I guess I can see why they're a little bit different. I think if I had to choose one, I would choose the Santa Singer. My biggest question, I cannot believe I almost forgot to ask this. Give me your recommendations for liquid lipsticks, ones that you like. You guys kind of know what I like. You know, I'm not going to be into like purples or anything like super dramatic or crazy um, for me. I've heard that Anastasia has some really good ones. I've heard that um, Gerard, I had a thing in the name has really good ones as well. I'd never heard of them, but people really recommended them to me and said that they are, they have liquid lipsticks. I don't know, maybe I'm really late to the boat on that. I don't know, but if you have any recommendations, let me know, because I would love to try some new ones too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely keep on the lookout for new things coming up. I'm about to film a whole overview of my filming area, which I think will kind of be fun since it's so different. And yeah, it's kind of interesting to see what I'm looking at when when I'm filming these. So I hope that you guys like that. And as always, everything will be linked below if you were looking for anything specific. And I will talk to you guys very soon.